and welcome back to the Origin Summer Preview. I'm Eric Summerer here with Brian and Tony from Arcane Wonders. We're looking at the latest release from the Dice Tower Essentials line, Royals. We're very excited about Royals. It's uh, from famous uh, game designer Peter Haas. Uh, I found the game uh, uh, last year. Tom uh, introduced me to it, and we were so excited to play it. It's a very uh, simple and intuitive game to play, very elegant. It has lots of different tactics and strategies in it, yet it's very easy to pick up. Uh, most of the time when we teach players, that we actually just start the game, and within a few minutes they're already playing. Hmm. Uh, you draw cards, and you spend the cards to um, influence nobles on the board. It's an area control game. And uh, one of the great mechanics of it is that it just has so many different ways to score that you don't get locked out. So uh, uh, kind of a light Euro casual game, but players won't feel like they, uh, if they get locked out of one area, they have plenty of other areas to go and no one player can really dominate the game and in, in, in keep everyone out. You have to choose where you're gonna go and it's not hard to switch strategies midstream and go for a different scoring mechanism and still do well in the game. So what's the basic mechanism? What does a turn look like? Okay, so I'm just going to run through a, a simple uh, turn, kind of around explaining different sure. things. So, so saying I had a few cards in my hand already, I could then look at, and this was from a previous turn, I could look at this and I could draw three cards. So I would draw one and two others. And with this card option, I can now purchase or influence different nobles on okay. the board. And you'll see here is there are different card values. So like the princess costs six to influence. So I only have four and three different cards. You okay. can do have an option to exchange three cards for one of any other, but that still wouldn't allow me to like influence a princess. But I could using four and three cash that in to influence the cardinal. Okay. Now, when I influence something, I place a cube on the board, I would immediately take the city bonus for this if it were available. Now, I likely wouldn't have that many cards on my first turn, but right. if we went around a couple times, different city bonuses would likely be, we'd be taken as we go. But I'd take this, I'd also take another cube, and I'd place it on the cardinal. Okay. Now, what happens through the game is different cubes will be placed on this and at the end of the game the player with the most cubes on a, a, a piece will gain that many victory points so they'd gain 14 for the princess okay now if that were tied what would happen at the end of the game is you would take it and you'd split it oh neat and each player would gain the seven victory i was points. wondering why these came apart yeah so and then the third thing to notice is that if this is a three-way tie no one gets the points. So there is an option to uh, build a strategy of denying different players points at the end of the game. Right. Uh, as you go through, there. so I explained there's influencing the noble in a city. So that's a city bonus. There's also the country bonus. So if you influence a noble, any one of the two, in all of the countries, or all of the cities in a country, you then would gain the country bonus. Okay. So that was a second type of, of uh, a victory point that you can get. And that was first to do it, second to do it? Correct. Okay. Yep. Yep. So then there's another type of uh, bonus that's available, and that goes along with the cubes that we place. If you place influence on every single one of the different types, you okay. then gain the 16 point. Oh. And the second one would get and that's 12. significant. And this is yeah. a significant Can't bonus. Can't ignore that bonus. <laughs> And that gives a strategy where even if you aren't uh, focusing on one particular area or you have focused on one area, you can then diversify into different nobles of different areas. So there are a lot of different strategies that you can uh, tap into to gain points in different manners. Mm -hmm. The game is played in three ages. So the ages are depicted down at the bottom. Yep. I only have victory points on the first stage. Okay, but, but those would be filled with victory would be filled. points. Okay. And what happens here is when the deck of cards is run through, you then trigger the end of the age okay. and victory points are, are announced. You look at the power, the influence of the p different players in the country, and the person with the most, the high, highest sum of the number, gets the first bonus. Okay. And the second player, the second highest gains the second bonus. Are those randomly determined or is that a, uh, a preset? It's a preset. Sequence. Sequence. Okay. Yeah. So, and basically as you, so as you influence, you're looking at how do I best 
strategize for the age, for the for the the long term game, but also for each individual segment of the game, so that I can maximize my my potential benefit. So if I want to get my hands on Royals, yes. How how soon can I get it? Can I get it now? Uh, right now you can get it at Origins. Okay. Uh, we're doing a pre-release special. The uh, aside from that, we're looking at the end of July, okay. first week of August. So, so certainly before by Gen Con, Gen Con you'll absolutely. have full stock absolutely. and everything. Out. And there'll be plenty at Gen Con too. Yes, absolutely. Excellent, gentlemen. Thank you very much. No, appreciate Royals. it. Royals. Thanks for watching.